And we're back to our drawing board here saying, all right, we've covered um, saturated. Uh, we are now going to go to the unsaturated fats uh, that are called polyunsaturated fatty acids. And if you get into the geek world or if you take biochemistry in medical school, this is where they say PUFAs, polyunsaturated fatty acids. Um, but really, it is um, uh, the PUFA or omega-6 uh, fats are one of the, um, you can actually see our little, our little twinkles across there saying those are all derived from, if you, if you study the carbons of where did, that, where did those fats inside the red blood cell come from? The fats came, or the carbons, they were built from the foods that were in solid fat at room temperature. Uh, that, like lard, <laughs> like tallow. This is where bacon, and uh, that's why I have a pig, because bacon and a ketogenic diet are commonly talked about. And if you're new to the ketogenic diet, you will often get the attack of the, the onlooker to say, you can't eat that bacon. It's going to give you heart disease. And I'm here to say, don't be so quick to say that. When you have polyunsaturated fats, otherwise called omega-6 fats and they come from animal products we are mammals we will we will eat them from animals and they will become part of our saturated or, or polyunsaturated fats and it really matters that when you eat that bacon when you eat that pork or beef that you do it without a bunch of sugars so uh, here's just uh, another place where I'm showing you to remember that PUFA is the omega-6 uh, what I really want you to look at, though, is when you look at these carbohydrates, this is uh, our representation on the Dr. Boz channel for carbs. They're little square, rhomboid, red folks. And when you eat that bacon, but you put some maple syrup on it, or you put it with a bunch of toast, or you have it with cereal, you have that carbohydrate and that animal fat product, otherwise known as saturated fat. But when you eat saturated fat, uh, meaning you eat pig, that's called saturated fat. But if you eat it and your carbohydrates are low, it's called an unsaturated fat, which is totally confusing, right? But they are omega-6 fats. They are very healthy. They are what keep your blood vessels and blood skin cells and red blood cells very flexible, very healthy, very plump. But if you add carbohydrates, like I just did in this uh, situation here, and you eat it in a place where your blood sugars are high, or even just that you eat it with other carbohydrates routinely, you took that, that um, saturated fat from the pig, and instead of making it into a healthy omega-6, it stays a saturated fat. And saturated fats are high in patients that have heart disease. Uh, those saturated fats stay in their cell linings. They stay in their the linings to their blood vessels. And when patients first show up on a ketogenic diet and say, Doc, how can you eat all that bacon? Uh, what do you mean eat bacon without any carbohydrates? Uh, why do I need to do it that way? And it is specific to looking at when you put saturated fats from animals into a human body, but there's really high blood sugars around, or there's just an excessive amount of carbohydrates, you will turn them you will not turn them into the healthy side of unsaturated fats instead. So let's go back and do some easy things. So here's it. We're inside our, our bone marrow. We're making our red blood cell. We've sprinkled in some of the saturated fats. We've sprinkled in some of the monounsaturated fats with our avocado oil. And now we're going to add in some of our pig. And we ate this pig without any carbohydrates or low carbohydrates. So it is being used as an omega-6 fat, which is very flexible, which allows your skin to look resilient, which allows blood vessels uh, to have a lot more give and take instead of being hardened or stiff. Uh, so we've got our, our, pig, <laughs> our pig fat inside our red blood cells, and we get to use that in a much healthier way. Okay, let's keep going. So this is um, just a little bit. We got our saturated fats. Uh, we've already taken care of those. That's our sugar. Uh, saturated fats highly associated with eating it with carbohydrates or having high blood sugar before you put uh, the fats in. We had our monounsaturated ones. We've already covered that. And then um, our polyunsaturated fats. And then remembering that as we look at a polyunsaturated fat, our omega-6 are one of the two uh, 
um, categories for these polyunsaturated fats. And it's those polyunsaturated fatty acids that are essential. The rest of these, not essential. Your body can make them. But when it comes to the essential fats, meaning you can't make them, you have to eat them. When a ve vegetarian or a vegan comes to my clinic and says, you know, what is it that I need to watch out for? It, it is these fats, the origin of these fats that become the key component to building many other compartments within that, uh, that vegan or vegetarian. You cannot make them within the hu human body. You must eat them. All right. So here we go. We're going to look at our fish um, is our next one. Again, our fish is PUFA. You might have guessed that uh, people hear about, you know, if you're going to be on that ketogenic diet, you should eat a lot of fish. You should have high fish oil. You should supplement with fish oil. And indeed, that is all true. But what they're really trying to say is we know that cells and bodies that use polyunsaturated fat fatty acids, these PUFAs, these unsaturated fatty acids, to build their blood vessels, to heal their brains, to make the hormones within your body, these components are linked to less brain disease, less um, depression, less heart disease, um, uh, not just uh, less diagnoses on the doctor's charts, but a resilience that is highly associated with how many of these good fats, these unsaturated omega-6 and omega-3 fatty acids is your body using to build this next generation of cells to keep you healthy and alive and hopefully repair any of those uh, areas that haven't been so healthy. So again, polyunsaturated fatty acids, just in case you need me to say it one more time. And here's our little twinkle for all of the fishy, uh, the omega-3 fats that are found in the skin cells uh, of this red blood cell that we're building. So here we are back in that bone marrow. We've already built a lot of parts of our, of our uh, skin layer there. We're going to add the fish into there. And you can now start to see the structure that, uh, again, took a little time to put this together, but is a beautiful representation to say you are building a red blood cell by what you eat and what is your chemistry doing during the time that you're eating. All right. <clears throat> so if we move on, um, our next little... Uh, a section is uh, the egg. <laughs> so you cannot be on a ketogenic diet without talking about eggs. So I specifically put this in because the truth is people will talk about, I want you to eat foods that are high in omega-3s and, you know, not so many of the omega-6s. And I don't agree with all that. I'll show you why in just a minute. Um, but the truth is, is that pigs, <laughs> like our bacon, has a lot of omega-6s, but it does have omega-3. And fish have a lot of omega-3s, but they do have omega-6s. They almost always travel together. I mean, I actually can't think of one component of food that has only omega-6 or only omega-3 that is in nature that some chemist didn't monkey with. So an egg is a great representation of both omega-3 and omega-6, as are most foods on the ketogenic diet. Uh, they are heavier in omega-6s if you're from the upper Midwest uh, like I am, um, but uh, you can find uh, a balance of both of them. So once again, this is PUFO. I'm just talking about both the unsaturated fats that are in the omega-3s, those are our fish, and the omega-6, that's our bacon and our beef. Um, and those are overgeneralizations. But here's just a, uh, another sprinkling of where did the egg part of this uh, skin cell end up. And we added that to our overall building process. We are back in the bone marrow. We're going to add some egg to our uh, lining of the skin that we're building for this red blood cell. And again, this is happening inside your body right now. It's happening inside my body. And if I look at my red blood cells, I could see how well did I do at eating foods with the right chemistry in place over the past three months. And the way I do that is because those red blood cells only last about 90 to 100 days. So they last about three months. So we can look to see how well are the red blood cells doing that I made today, as well as the ones that are about to die, that are about at the end of their life expectancy. Okay, so... We saved the bad boy for last. Uh, he is the devil because it really is devilish that these are in your body at all. Uh, trans fats are actually, they are not essential. <laughs> your body does not make them. In fact, trans fats are found in the man-made fats that are a huge um, um, 
almost a, my generation of fake butters and uh, fats that sit on the shelf and they last a long time. So they, and they're made to taste like butter, but they really are built from specific types of fats that are kind of crusty. They're not, they're not like your omega-6 and your omega-3. They're not plump. They're not flush. They aren't stretchy. They're stiff and they're highly associated with inflammatory problems. In fact, if I wanted to predict who's got the highest risk of heart disease, having a heart attack in the next four to six weeks, looking at the trans fats that they have inside their body would give me a better idea than looking at your total cholesterol. Let's take a, close, a closer look. So here's our inflammatory guys, that's the devil. Um, I did sprinkle him throughout here too. So here's our bone marrow. We've got all the good guys in there right now, but uh, we are gonna add in the devil, uh, and those are the trans fats. And what I like you to notice is that those trans fats, this is a, this is a lining that goes all the way around that cell. When, when you see that cut open things, I have, I've cut off an edge of the cell so you can see the top uh, layer of skin, and you can see the bottom layer of skin. Right here, I focused in on only that top layer of skin, but it is a mosaic. It is like a quilt built from which fats are, are in the bone marrow and being used to supply the body with the tools to make the red blood cells for, for today, for tomorrow. So there's our red blood cells uh, showing off where they're at, just kind of hidden throughout that mosaic. Um, but it's not just one layer, it is, a, it is a depth and it goes all the way around that red blood cell. Um, what I like to notice is if you look at how stiff our red blood cells are, or our trans fats are, they really have a rigidity. Um, one of the predictors of a heart attack is linked tr to trans fats because these red blood cells are known for being very pliable and squishy, and they are, um, they're, they're kind of a discoid shape with kind of like a, a tire on the outside and, a, and, and in the middle kind of in, in dents a little bit. And as you look at that cell, it's meant to morph and squeeze and fit through tiny openings. And it's actually one of the predictors that we want that red blood cell, if, if the blood supply gets really tiny, uh, that the arteries start to clog. Healthy red blood cells should be able to squeeze through those tiny openings to the other side unless they have a bunch of trans fats in them. If the trans fats are there, the red blood cell is too stiff and it cracks, at which point it clots. And that links highly to that heart attack, that blocked artery. Uh, those trans fats are naughty. <laughs> when you look at what they do, also they create a lot of inflammation. The higher your number of trans fats inside those red blood cells, uh, the higher number inside your arteries, inside your brain. Uh, it isn't just the cells in our bone marrow that are using these to build the parts of the body. Um, every cell is using fat to create the skin lining around the outsides of those cells. Red blood cells just happen to be easy to, access, to assess, to have access to, and we can study which fats ended up in that red blood cell. Please subscribe to my channel, and don't forget to click the notification bell so you don't miss out on any new videos. Stay tuned.